Hi all and welcome to our essential tips video for Nightingale. The game itself guides you through the basic gameplay mechanics and towards goals you must complete. Yet it is easy to miss tutorial hints, the right controls or simply some shortcuts. That's why we gathered our favorite tips to help you get more comfortable with the game while learning the ropes and exploring it for the first time. Some might be more obvious than others, but we hope you'll find at least a few of them helpful. Oh, just as we were about to publish this, the team posted about interface changes for early access launch, so a quick disclaimer, some UI elements will have changed since we recorded our footage. While the story you choose early in the character creator has no impact on anything, at least not yet, the starter loadout difficulty settings towards the end do. Medium is the default loadout for the average survivor. It lets you start the game with average clothes and gear that are fit for purpose. There's also easy. This gives you better clothes, a backpack, etc. Nothing you can't craft yourself soon enough, but you enter the Fey world well prepared. On the other end, hard provides you with fine civilian clothes, which is less than optimal for survival. And there's also extreme, which throws you into the game in your underwear. As mentioned, you can soon enough craft better clothes and gear, so this mainly affects the first few hours in-game. Once you can open portals yourself, the realm cards you use decide the difficulty for all further content. Your final step before naming your realm walker is to select realm power. This decides how hard the environment is in your starter realm. Just like starting power, the options are easy, medium, hard and extreme. Your choice will affect your starter realm only, since as mentioned, once you can open your own portals, the difficulty is linked to the realm cards being used. Now on to how to switch easily between first and third person view. Since many of you have a preferred playstyle and not everyone wants or can play in first person mode. While you start in first person by default. Simply press F5 to enter third person mode and vice versa. Two other shortcuts we usually look up as soon as playing a new game are the ones for auto run and sprint. To auto run press caps lock and to sprint hold shift. If you're keen on capturing some cool moments then clicking F4 will allow you to take screenshots or take footage without interface. And there are also emotes, which you can select from a radial wheel by pressing set. Now to pick up loot. While it's obvious to press E to interact, you can also hold E to pick up all loot within a certain distance. There is no need to single click every item laying on the ground. In the preview version we played, swapping and using items on the shortcut bar took a bit of getting used to. But the devs have already made changes to the UI layout for the early access launch version. Weapons and tools you use with your main hand can be bound and used for the buttons 1 to 5 on the left hand side. And all offhand items and consumables can be added to the shortcuts 6 to 0 on the right hand side. In our preview version, this was inversed, which was rather confusing. By the way, there is also an option to rebind your keys and the settings. While you can use your main hand items directly when pressing the corresponding keys, in our build offhand items were used by pressing F. You can swap between them by clicking the corresponding numbers, but to actually use them you need to press F. Stashing away your items is easy. Simply press H and you sheath your active tools or weapons. A last note, in our preview version we could not sheath offhand items, which was kind of annoying. We are not sure if that's still the case with the new interface. When we asked the devs while playing, they said they were looking into it. But if not, the best option is to keep a free slot and click it if you want free hands. Now there are also some shortcuts for building. While one of the first things you learn is to press B for building, this menu lets you primarily select and place blueprints.
but there is another very useful shortcut and that is X to enter building mode. In build mode you can see additional controls that let you copy, move and remove build pieces and placed items. While you can use all three controls with placed items like workbenches and deco, build pieces can only be copied and removed. Removing anything with these controls also returns all resources to you. Another thing you might have noticed is that structures and placed items can take damage. Now if you're like us and often rush through the tutorial hints and don't read every item description, you might have missed that in order to repair things you need a hammer. Once crafted and equipped, simply hit the structure or placed item to repair it. While it might be something relating to the preview build we played on, we often had difficulties repairing foundations and even crouching and hitting the floor didn't do anything. One thing that did a trick for us but will certainly not work with every building is trying to reach and repair the foundations from the outside. Repairing your gear is done with Essence Dust, an essential resource in Nightingale. Essence Dust can be found as loot drops or as rewards from environmental puzzles and points of interest. But another way to keep your stock of Essence Dust refilled is by extracting it from items. These can be most items and resources you find. Simply right click the items and select Extract to gain Essence Dust. To repair your gear, either click the Repair All button in your inventory or right click each individual item. Let's quickly talk about resting. Getting tired and exhausted is one of the survival elements you need to manage in Nightingale. An easy way to regain energy and to be relaxed is by resting at your bedroll or bed. Depending on the location, you might need shelter or a roof above your head to rest. Once you interact with the bed, you will notice that there are two options for a short and a long rest. A short rest lets you recover instantly. And a long rest, which is only available after dark, will allow you to skip through the night. If you play with others, everyone needs to rest at the same time to progress time. There are of course various buffs in game, and some of the simpler ones to maintain as beginner are food buffs. You can have a total of three different food buffs, as long as you consume different types of food. Like here, we cooked fish, meat and plants. When you open your inventory, you can mouse over the icons next to your status bar and see what they do when you eat different raw resources or cooked meals. Speaking of buffs, you might have come across some environmental puzzles across the realms and solving those usually allows you to release a favor once completed. Favors are different kind of buffs you unlock for a short time. But one thing you might overlook is that you can look at the favor before releasing it and see it rotate through different options. Meaning you can select from a few different buffs. We found new realm cards and recipes for tools and decorative items, not only from traders in each realm, but also when exploring. Like when completing fate hours, puzzles, quests and such, so don't hesitate to fully explore even your starter realm. There are of course also negative effects, and some of them can be caused by weather. Yes, weather is actually a thing in-game, and it can either be based on the biome, like heat in the desert, or change throughout the day. If it suddenly starts to rain, you get wet, which gives you a debuff, and should it start to hail, you actually take damage. You can either take shelter to protect yourself from the elements, or if you have already crafted one, Use an umbrella to shield yourself from heat, rain and hail. If you've come across an NPC survivor that you could recruit, which is usually done by completing tasks for them, you might have noticed that you can't really manage their actions or behavior. They simply follow you and use the tool or weapon you equip them with. They can assist you in combat, gather resources, help build structures, or be used as pack mule. One thing they also do is maintaining the fire for workstations requiring fuel. 
if you have ignited it and it's running out of fuel, they will assist. However, they literally use anything from the storage that serves as fuel, meaning they might burn your best refined logs or paper for realm cards. This is where storage container access comes into play. When interacting with your storage, you can see a checkbox that either allows or restricts access for survivors, and it's key to protect your best resources by choosing the correct permissions. Sadly, on our preview build this functionality wasn't working as intended yet. So our recruit regularly refilled workstations with anything we had stored away. In that case, it's best to turn the stations off until you need them, as survivors only refuel active burning fires. And that's it for our essential starter tips. We hope you find some of them useful and if you'd like to see more content from us, don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up or leave a comment.